But it, it's, it's really good to be here with you uh, today. This is my third year speaking at Boys State, and uh, it, it's always a great time. And uh, I, I was where you were just a couple of years ago. Actually, it was like 15 years ago, but I remember the experience fondly. Uh, I was a Federalist. We had lots of good chants about the Nats, too, that I can't say on camera. Um, but but it, was, it was a great experience. And I've been keeping up with you this week uh, on social media, not in a creepy way, but, you know, I've been <laughs> seeing who's coming to speak to you, and, I, and, and you've had a lot of, of great speakers. Now, but let's go ahead and, and get one thing straight. I know that it's 10 a.m. in the morning, and probably some of you are not yet fully awake. So uh, I'm going to keep this relatively brief because I know you have lunch after this, and you have your free time, and you have the talent show tonight. I hope some of you are going to do that. Uh, my friends and I played uh, Leonard Skinner to Freebird uh, when, when I was in uh, Boy State. If anybody wants to follow that up, um, that's right. Um, and so uh, what I would like to do is, is take 15 or 20 minutes, if you can give that to me, and, and let's, let's talk about a few things, let's consider a few things, then I'll have you on your way. All right, so we okay with that? Yeah. All right, good deal. Okay, so you've heard a lot of great people this week. Governor was here, Greg Harper, uh, Travis Childers, uh, Parker Wiseman, the mayor of Starkville, uh, my younger colleague, it's the first year I get to say that, uh, Jeremy Anderson was here a few nights ago. Uh, he, he's got a bright future ahead of him. Um, and then last night, I, I hear that you had a visit from the Steve Holland. Yeah. Who I'm sure was just as savory uh, in his remarks here as he is on the House floor. So uh, <laughs> that he, he, he is... He's a character. How about that? So uh, he was elected when I was like two years old, so he's been there a really long time. Um, and so you, you've had a good week. Now, a lot of these people have given you great political advice, probably some good career advice, and, and probably some of them want you to work on their cam campaign in the next couple of years. So uh, rather than telling you the virtues of holding office and running for office, uh, I'm going to try to take a step back and, and talk about kind of what this whole week has meant. Now, you guys go home tomorrow. Is that right? Okay, and uh, I'm sure they, they love Boys State, that's right, uh, that's what they're clapping for. Now, so you go home tomorrow, and, and a lot of you, uh, the temptation is that if you aren't um, interested in running for office, then you wonder how this week might be relevant to you, all right, because... Let's be honest, not everyone in this room is going to be governor one day. I mean, the math just doesn't work out unless we all live a really long time. Uh, however, just because you may not be interested in running for office or just because you maybe don't live and breathe politics the whole time doesn't mean you can't get something and take something away from this week. Uh, the temptation is for many of you that if you don't want to run for office, you don't want to work in politics, or you don't, you know, you don't just really live it, you wonder, okay, what can I take home from this? What, what does this mean for me as I go back to my school for my senior year? And that's what I briefly want to talk to you about. Uh, I would disagree that if you think this week is not relevant, uh, even if you're not interested in, in, in one day uh, running for office, okay, that this week is absolutely relevant to you. And, and I would venture to say that what the world needs right now, especially in this environment in Mississippi and in America, what the world doesn't need is another cliche politician. Okay? What the world really needs are people like you, young men, uh, young women, um, not in, this, not in this hall, of course, but who have come to life and who know their life's purpose and, and really want to make a difference in their community. All right, so that's what we're going to talk about. Okay, 15, 20 minutes. Here we go. All right, so the first thing I want you to do is I actually want you to get your phone out. And some of your staff may have, may have seen this exercise. We've done it in previous years. Uh, but if you want to participate, uh, we would, we'd love to have you do that too. Now, if you pull up your Twitter app, I have posted a question on my Twitter account. You don't have to follow me, but uh, there's a question there, and I'd like you to reply to it. Uh, my Twitter handle is Toby, T-O-B-Y, underscore, Barker, B-A-R-K-E-R, -E Toby, underscore, Barker. And I have posted a question on, uh, on my Twitter account, and I'm going to give you about one minute to reply to that, and we're going to make this interactive. If you don't have Twitter, I apologize. Or if you left your phone in, in your uh, room, then then I apologize too. Oh, sorry, it's Toby, T-O-B-Y underscore Barker. 
anything in that genre. Think, think of the Braveheart type. Uh, there you go. Epic movie. Yeah. All right. Here we go. We've got some coming in right here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention a few of these, and then I'm going to uh, maybe get you, uh, get you up here to John Willis Stevens. Where are you at? Come on up. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Jake Griffin, where are you at? That's a little weird, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> all right, let's see. Uh, Paul Pratt. <laughs> Scotty Bateman. All right, here we go. Quickly, all right, here we go. Uh, is there a... You'll just talk loud, okay? All right, tell us your name. John Willis Stevens. And what, what town? West Point. Okay. No, what town of your... In oh, Conquer. That's especially relevant this weekend, huh? Yeah. All right. So, uh, tell us what your favorite epic movie is. I said Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim. What is it about Pacific Rim that, uh, that, you, that really speaks to you? It's huge robots fighting things. I thought that was pretty cool. Okay. And it's the, the fighting is, is yeah. what... Okay. All right. Thank you. Now, uh, let's... Is she going to speak for you? Are you going to be the spokesman? She uh, can. Okay, all right. So what was your movie? Uh, 300. Okay, what is it about 300 that, uh, that you like? The fight scenes were great, and everybody was willing to die for what they loved. Okay, that's, that's, that's important. We're going to talk about that in a second. Everyone was willing to fight uh, and die for what they loved, all right? Now, and tell us your name. Paul Pratt. Paul, and what town are you with today? Hyde Smith. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you got a flag too. That's 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 impressive. All right, your movie was what? Saving Private Ryan. Okay. What was it about Saving Private Ryan? Um, it's got a great moral behind it. Uh, always do your best, no matter what, and please those who are ahead of you. Yeah, and, and one of my favorite lines, and just because we came through Memorial Day last week, one of my favorite lines in Saving Private Ryan uh, is when is when the, the the captain at the end is is about to to die, and and he and he tells him. Uh, earn this, and, and I think that's, that's an incredible message right there. Um, tell us your name? Scotty Bateman. Scotty. And what town are you with? Harper. Harper. <laughs> and what was your movie? The Patriot. Okay. What was it about the Patriot? Just the patriotism and the realism of the revolution, and they were willing to die for anything. Willing to die, the patriotism of the revolution. Uh, give these guys a hand. Thank you so much. Now, that was, that was important because you heard a few themes there. Uh, passion, love for country, uh, willing to die for something they believed in, all right? Um, can, can, can I get one, one or two other opinions just from the floor? What was it about those kinds of movies that really speak to people, especially men uh, our age? Okay, all right. You got an opinion on that question, though? What was it about those movies? Bravery. Brotherhood between people. Okay. And, and one more. It's very personal. Uh, your devotion to your people beside you, your devotion to your country. Now that's important, and, and I want to mention this. Um, those movies speak to us because as men, we want those things. We want to know that we, had, we have what it takes. If we're presented with a challenge, we want to know that we can overcome, that we can win. We want some kind of adventure. We want some kind of battle to go fight. We want some kind of challenge to go tackle. That is ingrained in each of us. I think we all want to be remembered. We want to have an impact. We want to know that we made a difference. The world was different because we existed. And I think that's why those movies speak to us. Now, how, many of your, how often do your lives reflect those kind, that kind of adventure? Not a lot. And, you know, not all of us are, um, are going to go off to war and, and have those kinds of experiences. But I, 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 I want to tell you today that that kind of story that, that those movies call us to, that kind of bravery, that kind of courage can happen 
every day of your life, regardless if you ever step on, onto film, all right? And the problem with America today, I believe, and, and the problem with some, some, some things in our state is we don't have enough young people who realize that their lives are stories worth living, all right, worth fighting for. And today, the first thing I want you to walk away with is that your life is a story. Your life matters, all right? You matter. You, you are significant, okay? Because sometimes when you're, when you're in high school, and, and, and I remember going through this too, when you're 16, 17 years old, really you're just trying to get to, through the next class. You're trying to get to the weekend. You're trying to, um, you know, go out with your friends. There's that girl you want to ask out. In my case, it was the girl that was going to reject me. Um, all those things... And our vision for our lives and our vision for our world is very, very small. And that's a problem. We need to be living in stories like these movies you've been, you've been, you've been hearing about, all right? We need to aspire to that kind of adventure. We need to, aspire, we need, we need to have some kind of cause that we take up. Uh, I've been in office seven years, and I've learned that every year I need to have one or two really new initiatives that I push. Even if they're not involved in my job as a legislator, there needs to be one or two causes that I take up because it keeps me fighting, it keeps me hungry. And you guys can have that now, and I wish that I would have heard that uh, when I was in high school, because I wasted a lot of time. And so today, understand your life as a story. You are more significant than just the place where you came from. You are more than the report card you had uh, a few weeks ago that came out. Uh, you are worth more than just a circle of friends. You matter. You are significant. Your life is a story, okay? Can we walk away with that? Your life's a story, all right? Second thing is understand that you are the author of that story, um, that, that you get to determine how your story plays out, starting tomorrow, because, again, this, tomorrow's the next chapter. You go home. What do you take from this? Understand that you are the author. Many times when we get older, uh, especially when we're going through teen, our teenage years, we start to get a little more self-conscious. We realize that we weren't, um, we're not as handsome as our, as our mother told us we were. Uh, we're not that great athlete uh, that we thought we could be. You know, in, in, in when you're a kid, you, you want to be a professional football player when you grow up, or you want to be an astronaut. Okay, that, that's. And then a lot of times you, you realize when you go through high school, I'm not the best athlete. And what happens is when you come into when you come into contact with reality and the way circumstances are, you begin to set the bar for yourself lower and lower because you know. When, when you deal with disappointment, you start to box yourself in on what, you, what it is you're actually capable of. And that is the, that is the worst thing you can do. And, and this, this is something I had to deal with when I was a junior and senior in high school. Uh, I grew up in Meridian, as you, as you heard. Anybody from Meridian here? Okay. All right. We get a little, a little more pride than that, though, okay? Yeah. It's Meridian. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, when I grew up in Meridian, I, I wasn't always this... Uh, fantastic human specimen you see before you. Um, I, was, I was on the football team. Um, they, weren't, they wouldn't let me on the field a lot because they were afraid I was going to hurt somebody. Um, I was actually a kicker. I, w I wasn't the kicker. I was a kicker, which, um, which shows how much I got on the field. Um, and, and my junior and senior year, I had, I had a terrible year uh, in football. I, I think I made it to the field twice my senior year, and I think I missed both kicks. It was, a, it was, a, it was an awful year. And as I went through that year, I realized, you know, have I wasted this time? I'm not the best athlete. Uh, and, and that really, it kind of makes you self-conscious uh, when, when you're not the best athlete, because uh, society tends to reward and praise those people who are the best in their field. Uh, I had friends, but I wasn't the most popular. Uh, I, I made decent grades, but I wasn't the smartest. Uh, my family wasn't the, the, the wealthiest. And sometimes you, you let that kind of self-consciousness start to diminish what you expect from yourself. And again, you, you lower the bar of expectations. Does that make sense? Uh, just because you experience disappointment doesn't need, mean you need to lower the bar. The good thing is you are the author of your story. You decide what it is you do. You decide what it is you do starting tomorrow when you go home and you have your entire senior year. You are the author. And that's really good news because it means you get a fresh start. It doesn't matter what your grades have been up to this time. It doesn't, mean, doesn't uh, matter um, if, if you're good at sports or you're not good at sports. It doesn't matter if you have a great family or if one parent hasn't been there. That doesn't matter. You are the author of your story. That's good news. It also means that you don't have any excuses. Life isn't fair. 
Just go ahead and expect that. It's not fair at all. Um, but you can't let that d determine your destiny. Your circumstances can't determine how successful or, or, or not successful you are in life. You are the author of your story, okay? So, your life is a story. You are the author. And you can go, your story can be as big or as small based on the decisions you make. Based on the decisions you make starting now. And, and if you'll give me uh, a second, uh, I'm going to go over uh, five quick decisions that you can make that can help your story starting right now. Okay? All right. Real quick. First thing, good decision to make. You are about to enter your senior year in high school this fall. Finish. Finish high school. I know that goes without saying. I'm talking to 384 of the best and brightest in the state of Mississippi, but I feel like I need to say it. Finish high school. If you don't finish high school, your chances at, um, at building a life and, and being successful, I've sat through enough hearings to know they go way down. All right. Secondly, after you finish high school, have a plan for after high school. Okay. That may mean a community college. That may mean a university or a trade school, or it may mean the military. Have a plan for after high school. You don't have to have it figured out right now, but start thinking about it. What's after high school, okay? Graduate from high school. Have a plan for after. Get a job. Any job. Get a job because you need to learn how, you need to learn work ethic. You need to learn to show up. You need to learn to arrive on time. You need to learn to take orders. You need to learn how to lead. You need to learn how to work with people who don't think like you. Get a job, hold it for a year. In, in Meridian, I worked at Burger King on A Street for two years. And it was interesting, to say the least. Uh, however, that job taught me so much about responsibility. Okay? Find you a job. Even if it's part-time, but hold it for a year, learn to show up. All right. Now we're about to get real with number four. Can we get real for a second? All right. Don't father a child until you're married. None of you are financially or emotionally mature to handle that kind of responsibility. And it's important to make solid decisions right now. Don't father a child until you're married. And we know how to prevent that, don't we? Okay, all right. That's, that's all we need to say. All right. Be responsible with your own self and with the people around you. And, and here's the thing, and, and here's the fifth thing that I, that I really want to hone in on because of the generation that we're in. I'm a little ahead of you in the generation, but we're all millennial uh, generation Y right here. Be the better person, especially to people who aren't like you. Mississippi, we have a very storied past that, that is sometimes, uh, sometimes we're not proud of, but I really believe that this generation can be the generation that puts the whole race thing to bed for good. <laughs> but that only starts when each of you engage in behavior that is different, that, that changes things. And that means don't use racial slurs. Don't laugh at racial jokes. And if, you, and if you do that, understand that you're about to enter into a world, into a world that's it's going to be a very rude awakening for you if you're engaged in that kind of behavior. I don't care if your friends do it at high school. I don't care if your parents and your grandparents have done it. It's small. It's belittling. Just stop. All right? Just stop. All right. Again, thinking about treating people with respect who are different than you, all right? So we've talked about the race thing. I'm also going to say this. Don't use gay slurs, and don't use gay jokes, all right? <laughs> even if you disagree with the lifestyle, even if you disagree politically, all right, it is, we, we are not to judge anyone. And, and you should be engaging in, in behavior that, that is empathetic. And if we claim to be people of faith, and I, I imagine that many people in this room claim to be people of faith, we need to be treating people as the person that we claim to follow would treat them. All right? So I, I just want to leave that with you. And finally, 
and, and I haven't mentioned this before, is, is engage in behavior that's very empathetic toward people, especially those who are disabled, uh, with, whether it be physical limitations or intellectual limitations, all right? Uh, we need people who are compassionate, and if you're going to be the next generation of leaders in the state, uh, you need to be bigger people and better, all right? So making good decisions, all right? We're going to finish high school. We're going to have a plan for after high school. Uh, we're going to get a job. We're going to not father a child until we're married, and we're going to treat people who are different than us with respect, okay? We can do all five of those things. So going back, we're understanding that our life is a story, that we are the author, that how, how big or how small our story depends on the decisions we make. And finally, if you'll pull your phones back out. All right. And, and you're going to see that, and then you can, you can answer that as you will. Understand that the individual stories that you write with your life affect the larger story of humanity, and especially in this state. We all know that our state has a lot of issues. Uh, we tend to be first in things that nobody wants to be first in, and we tend to be last in everything that you don't want to be last in. We need a new story, collectively. But it starts with people taking initiative in their schools, uh, in their communities, and, and making a difference. And... So, when I ask the question, what is one thing in your community or your school that you would like to see changed? And I have a, one here that says motivation of students to perform at a higher level, better education, um, curbing drunk driving, uh, social outreach, one wants to end bullying. Um, treating other people in respect, uh, training up leaders in our education system. Uh, more jobs, student, making students want to be successful, less segregation. These are all things that you have said that you would like to change in your school and your community. And the good news is you have one year of high school left, and there's no reason that you can't be the person to do all of these things. And as I, as I, I want you to think about right now uh, and throughout the rest of the day, what kind of story is it that you're writing? Is it one that uh, will be remembered? Is it one that you can point to that says, yes, my story affected the greater story? Ask yourself those questions. And if, you've, and if you tweeted me back one of these things, and as you're thinking about what's one thing in my school I wish was different, there's no reason as 384 of the best and brightest uh, rising seniors that you can't do that. You have one year left, and then you're going to go on to, to whatever it is you're going to do. Make that year count. Your story affects the larger story because the answer to our state's woes are not going to come from Washington. It's not going to come from Jackson. It's going to start when individual people like you begin living, coming to life, and having an impact. And and that's what I want to leave you with is uh, understand your life as a story. You are the author. Good decisions make your story better. And then when you write a good story, you affect the greater story. Can we do that? All right. See you guys.